Good morning. This next conversation is for all of you stargazers out there. This morning we're talking about some of the best places to see the brightest stars in Canada. Did you know there's a special designation for dark sky preserves, placed de places dedicated to reducing or eliminating light pollution and showcasing Mother Nature in all of her glory? You are looking at one in Nova Scotia right now. Last night, travel journalist Lauren Christie spent the night under a blanket of stars and he joins us this morning, fresh off of that experience. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Rashmi. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well, thank you. And you, let's start with where you are. It looks beautiful behind you. Yeah, I'm at Trope Point Lodge, which is actually in southwestern Nova Scotia. And we are in the heart of the region known as Acadian Skies and Mi'kmaq Lands. And it's actually the first region in North America that was designated as a dark sky preserve by the Starlight uh, Foundation. And this hotel, the Trope Point Lodge, was the first hotel in the world to receive that designation. Incredible. And so dark sky preserve, what exactly does that certification mean? Well, it was created in conjunction with UNESCO and the United Nations uh, World Tourism Authority. And basically, it's saying that the skies here are some of the darkest skies on the continent due to the lack of light pollution, as well as other natural phenomena. But in order to receive the certification, you do have to do some work to get there. You have to take all of your lights that point upwards, for example, and either get rid of them or retrofit them so they point downwards to eliminate uh, light pollution in the sky. But you also need to pre uh, present places for the public to enjoy the night sky, as well as educational opportunities and programming so they understand what they're looking at. And so you were stargazing last night. Lauren, what was it like? Well, I have to tell you, in the intro, you did say I was under a blanket of, of stars. Unfortunately, it was a little cloudy last night, so mm. there was no blanket for me last night. But I am very lucky in that I have been to the region before, and it truly does look like the, the things that you're seeing there. You know, in urban areas, there's roughly 200 stars you might see. There are thousands that you see when you get into the rural areas, particularly in the dark sky preserves. And what's really great about this lodge is that they have an on-site astronomer named Jamie. And so she took us out to the viewing platform, and you can see the platform there in the day that you go a walk out to. Uh, and once you get to the platform not only does she point out the different stars and the constellations but she tells you the history and the stories behind them so it's anything from ancient lore right up into present day but one of the stories i love the most uh was a story that was told about um how the slaves fleeing to canada and the underground railroad created a song called follow the dipping gourd which essentially is basically giving each other directions to follow the big dipper and the polaris the north star all the way to canada and their freedom so really great stories and when you get into those stories it really makes you appreciate the sky yeah really appreciate the sky and some of those images really do look like a blanket of stars there Lauren so where else can you do this in Canada well, uh, the Starlight Foundation is globally, but the Royal Astronomical, Astronomical Society of Canada, there's a tongue twister for you, uh, they actually also provide a designation that follows most of the same criteria. And so there's almost 30 sites across Canada that you can enjoy it at, 13 of which, I have to give shout out, are at Parks Canada Parks, uh, all the way from Terra Nova, Newfoundland, out to Jasper uh, in Alberta and all places in between. Um, so you can go on, have a look, go to one of those dark sky preserves. It's great to appreciate. And I got two tips from Jamie, the astronomer, which I'll pass on as well. One was... Uh, when it is hazy out, it is less optimal for star viewing. So this fall, if you're planning on a getaway, great time to do it once that air gets cooler and crisper. And if you're really smart, uh, make sure you plan your trip uh, around the new moon versus the full moon, because although a full moon looks nice, it's actually uh, natural light pollution that creates a, a not as optimal stargazing for us. Oh, that's incredible. And I just learned recently there are more planets than stars, which makes me just look at the sky from a different perspective now. 100%. And I think if you come and do these things and take part in these educational opportunities, which is really what it's all about, you re learn to appreciate it more. And, you know, ultimately, you know, Parks Canada and other the Astronomical Society will say, you know, the main reason for doing this, of course, it's important to protect the sky, but it's also symbolic of just how much natural resources uh, we can waste that it's unnecessary to do. So these dark sky preserves are just one example of how important it is to protect our, our natural, uh, natural history and natural life here in Canada. All right. Thanks for motivating us to get outside. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you. Have a great day. And tonight will be a great night to find a dark sky preserved near you with the Perseid meteor shower peaking in the next day or so. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.